Okay, we're going to look at section 3.1. We're going to define something called a matrix transformation. This is nothing really new, it's just a new name for something old we've seen before. Basically, we're just going to look at matrix times a vector and explore what that means as a definition. So what we'll do is we'll look at the goals, we'll define this idea of a matrix transformation, we will go over the basic idea, make some definitions, and then do a bunch of examples. So when this is over, you should be able to uh, give a geometric interpretation of what a matrix transformation is given a matrix. Uh, if I give you a matrix, you should identify whether it's a shear, reflection, rotation, or projection. And you should be able to determine the domain, the codomain, um, and get the basic idea of the range. Uh, that should be a little fuzzy after this. It's something we're going to take the next couple sections to really go over and explore. All right, so we've seen matrix times a vector multiplication. So the idea is if you take a matrix times a vector, if you think about the matrix in terms of its columns, matrix times a vector just gives you a linear combination of the columns of that matrix. So here's the thing. If I just have A times X, that basically defines a rule to give you a new vector. Now we need to be very careful here because we're working with vectors. So we're going to assume A is an M by N matrix. So that means if I take A times X, X has M, oops, sorry, that's wrong. X has N rows and A times X is going to have M rows. So we're just going to make this a definition. Uh, a times x is a matrix transformation. So you're given a vector in Rn, and you're going to get out a vector in Rm, and that's assuming that the matrix A has M rows and N columns. Okay? And you end up with just the uh, a linear combination of the columns of the matrix. All right, so we're going to explore what this means. We're just going to scratch the surface here, and this is going to be something we're going to go back and revisit many times throughout this course. So uh, this is going to be a bit of a journey. Um, there's a lot of things we can get out of this. We can get a, we'll talk about this later, we'll get rotations, we'll get projections, we'll get shears, all kinds of crazy things, and all kinds of combinations of those things. Um, so basically here, we're just going to get the idea do some examples, and try to get some kind of geometric interpretation of what's going on here. Okay. So the main idea here is this. We have a matrix A, and it's not going to change. That's some fixed matrix. We're going to have some inputs. These are going to be vectors U. And this is going to be a vector, oops, that's wrong, with n rows. And when we do this, we're going to get some output, a times u, which is going to have m rows. Okay? And n could be bigger than m, n could be the sa same as m, or n could be smaller than m. So just as a rough example, if uh, n is 2, we're going to be working in two dimensions, and if m is 3, you're going to take a vector in two dimensions and get a vector in three dimensions out of this. In this particular case, this is some input. A times U is the output, and we would say that AU is the image of U. Okay, so this is basically what you get out of this transformation if you plug in U. So the output for a given vector is the image of that vector. So some of the questions we're going to explore is what are the possible inputs? Uh, well, let's see, so A is an M by N matrix. The things you can put into it are going to be a vector from Rn. So it's going to have all the possible inputs or any vector within rows. Uh, now we can ask 
from that set, what are the possible things we could input into it? Now, back in the days, say, when you took calculus, you had functions that looked like this. And that would only work for a specific uh, subset of the real numbers. So you can't plug in a zero or negative number to the log. Same thing with tangent. There were some numbers you just couldn't plug in. However, here, by our definition, a times any vector is always going to de be defined. So in this case, the collection of all possible inputs are going to be the same as this, this uh, set that's possible to put into it. So the domain, right, this is the same name we used before, the domain, the set of all possible inputs, comes from the place where same place uh, in terms of what's what makes sense from a uh, purely algebraic point of view. In terms of the outputs, that's going to end up going into RM, and that's going to be called the codomain. That's not necessarily all possible outputs, though. The set of all possible outputs that can come from this is going to be the range, and we're going to try to figure out what could possibly come out of this for the range. And we've already seen in the case of given 1x, you get ax. The relationship from one input to its output, we're going to give that a name. We're going to call that the image. In terms of the range, we're, again, we're going to explore this again. But if I take a times u, this is going to give me a linear combination of the columns of a. And since now this is going to be any possible u I could plug in here is going to be OK, this is going to basically be the span of the columns of A. So in terms of uh, what is the range of this thing, the range is going to be the span of the columns of A. We'll see more of that later.